In this video, I am going to discuss about interest rate risk. Interest rates are the cost of borrowing money or the amount of money earned on an investment. It is usually expressed as a percentage of the amount borrowed or invested. For example, if you borrow $1000 at 5% interest rate, you would need to pay back the original $1000 plus 5% of that amount of $50. Now you know this is a per annum rate even though this term is not given here. So now what you have to return the initial amount which is the $1000 plus the interest cost. In order to calculate the interest cost you need to convert the percentage value into a decimal value. So let's divide 5 by 100 then multiplied by 1000. So this equals to $1050. This amount you have to repay. Similarly, if you invest $1000 at a 5% interest rate, you would earn 5% of the $1000 or 50 over the course of a year. Which means at the end of one year, you will receive $1050 which is the total of the initial amount and the interest earned on the deposit. Interest rates can vary depending on a number of factors, including inflation, the supply and demand of credit, and the policies of central banks. Now we have a better understanding of what this is. This is the monetary policy. This is where central bank in the economy controls the interest rates. Another important term you need to know about, which is yield. Yield is a term used for returns. The term yield is commonly used in the agriculture. The harvest is also called the yield. If you come across interest yield, which means interest return or dividend yield which means dividend returns you need to aware of this term now let's discuss about the impact of interest rates this is very crucial when it comes to macroeconomy you need to have a proper understanding of these chain of events if the interest rates increase what will happen borrowing money will be expensive because now the borrowers will have to pay higher interest cost on their borrowings. Depositors will receive higher returns. Because of the higher interest rates, depositors will receive higher interest return on their deposits. As a result, money supply in the economy will be decreased. Because borrowings will be decreased and the savings will be increased. Which means the money supply or the money circulation in the economy will be decreased. As a result, aggregate demand will decrease. Now we know what is aggregate demand, which is the total demand for goods and services in an economy. Because the money circulation in the economy decreases, the aggregate demand will also decrease. As a result, the economy will contract. Now let's discuss about what will happen if interest rate decreases. Borrowing money will be cheap because now the borrowers will have to pay less interest cost on their borrowings. Depositors will receive lower returns. Because of the lower interest rates, depositors will receive lower interest return on their deposits. So they will tend to spend more rather than saving. As a result, the money supply in the economy will increase because borrowers will borrow more money and depositors will tend to spend more rather than saving. As a result, the aggregate demand will increase. This will ultimately result the economy to expand. If this pattern continues, furthermore, this will turn into an inflation situation. Because the demand for goods and services will be increased in the economy. So that the general price levels of the goods and services will be increased. So the central bank can lower the interest rates. So the economy will be contract, the inflation will be reduced. This is the monetary policy the central banks use for control the economy.
Now let's discuss about the nominal rate and the real rate. The nominal interest rate is the rate of interest without adjusting for the effects of inflation, while the real interest rate is the rate of interest adjusted for inflation. For an example, you deposit $1000 in a savings account with a nominal interest rate of 5%. At the end of the year, you would expect to have $1050 which includes the initial deposit amount and the interest you earn on that deposit. So if the inflation for the year was 2%, what will happen? This 5% is only the nominal rate. These are typically published by the banks. This does not include the inflation adjustments. Now what you have to do is you have to adjust the nominal rate with the inflation rate. So you will get the real rate. So the real rate for the year was 3%. Which means at the end of the year, you have your initial amount and the real interest rate you earned on that deposit. Which equals to $1030. Which doesn't mean now your bank account has $1030. No, that is incorrect. At the end of the year, in your bank account, there will be $1050. So what this means is the purchasing power of money has reduced by 2% because of the inflation. So this $1050 has the real value of $1030 at the end of the year. The difference of $20 is the reduced purchasing power of your money which is due to the inflation. So what you need to know, the real rate is 3%. You have to adjust the nominal rate with the inflation rate. So you will get the real rate. So the net gain after one year is $30. Now let's discuss about the interest rate risk. Interest rate risk refers to the potential impact that changes in interest rates can have on the value of an investment or a business. What this means is changes of interest rates will affect the investments and business. This is a risk for them. So they have to reduce these risks. Hedging is a strategy used to reduce the impact of interest rate risks on investments or businesses. Now let's discuss about what are the hedging techniques businesses are using to reduce the interest rate risk. Forward contract. A forward contract is an agreement between two parties to buy or sell a fixed amount of a financial instrument at an agreed upon interest rate at a specified future date. Forward contracts are not traded on an exchange. These are customizable agreements. Let me explain this to you. Let's say you want to borrow $10,000 in two months. Not right now, in two months. And let's say the current interest rate on borrowing is 7%. Which means if you borrow money today, the interest rate on the borrowing will be 7%. And you are expecting this 7% to increase in two months time. So when you borrow money in two months time, that will be an additional cost to you. Because now you can borrow at 7%. But in two months time, it will increase. You don't need this to happen. So what you can do is you can go to the bank and come to an agreement with the bank in order to borrow $10,000 in two months time. Now you can fix the interest rate with the bank, but it may not be at the 7% rate. So this is a forward contract and the amount and the time period you can customizable with the bank and these are not traded on exchange and also this is an obligation which means if you come to an agreement with the bank for a forward contract you have to exercise this agreement this is an obligation whereas interest rate options are not an obligation interest rate options are exactly like forward contracts but not obligation which means you have the option to exercise this agreement or lapse this agreement. 
which means you have the option not to exercise this agreement which is why these are called the interest rate options you have the option to not to exercise interest rate futures interest rate futures are contracts that allow investors to buy or sell interest rate securities at a specific price on a future date this can be used to lock in interest rates and manage the risk of interest rate changes traded on an exchange and non customizable which means interest rate futures are non customizable which means you can tailor the amount and the time period as you need whereas in interest rate futures these are not customizable and these can be traded on an exchange thank you for watching see you in the next video